Welcome back survivalists. So when I first got into hammock camping, I fell in love with it. I think it's a much more enjoyable experience than tent camping. And I think I sleep 10 times better in a hammock than I do on the ground in a traditional tent. But I'm not gonna lie, I made a lot of silly mistakes when I first got into hammock camping. And I see a lot of other people making the same mistakes that I did when I first started. Because the truth is there is some stuff that you need to know and it's, it is kind of a steep learning curve to get into hammock camping. And that's why today I'm gonna talk to you guys about the top 10 mistakes I see hammock campers make. Stay tuned. So the first mistake I see a lot of people making is sleeping like a banana. You are not a banana and this is not how you're supposed to sleep. So this is actually kind of uncomfortable sleeping like this. What you actually wanna do is sleep at an angle. So not straight on from tree to tree, but you point your feet towards, let's say, the right side of the tree and your head towards the left side of the other tree. I'm telling you, you're gonna sleep 10 times better sleeping at an angle rather than sleeping straight on from tree to tree. And it's really for two reasons. One, when you sleep straight on like that, the sides tend to kind of come in on you and they kind of constrain you and you can feel a lot of pressure on your shoulders and on your arms to kind of get, the, everything just kind of gets pushed in like this, like you're in a banana peel. So the second reason is when you're strung up in a hammock and you're going straight on like a banana, all of your weight is right there on the center of the hammock. So what happens is that center part gets really tight because it has all the weight on it and you can feel that tightness running down your back and along your head and it becomes a little uncomfortable. But when you sleep at an angle, your weight is kind of distributed amongst the entire hammock and not just that center part. So more evenly distributes your weight. So the second mistake I see people making is not using some sort of underquilt or insulating barrier underneath of your hammock. And this is a big deal. Without an underquilt or some sort of insulation, your bare back is just gonna be up against this hammock and this is paper thin. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose a lot of body heat from your back being pressed up against your hammock like this. And you are going to be miserable. You are not gonna get any sleep. Trust me, I know. So there's really three options to kind of fix this. One is you can get an underquilt. An underquilt looks just like this and it's an insulating barrier that hangs underneath of your hammock. The one I use is my Outdoor Vital and what I really love about it is this can actually turn into a pod system where your underquilt will completely zip up all the way around you and your hammock and it is super warm. Now, if you don't want to spend the money on a underquilt, there are some other options as well. One, you can get some kind of sleeping pad or even a yoga mat to lay down in your hammock just to give you some sort of insulation, some sort of barrier from the exterior of the hammock. And the third option I sometimes see people use is like a really thick wool blanket that they sleep on top of. But you really need something to protect you from losing heat underneath of the hammock. And this is probably one of the biggest things that I see people neglect. So number three is not using tree straps. So what are tree straps? That's what these are here. And they're essentially just thick straps that wrap around the tree and then they have hooks on it for you to hook your hammock into. So aside from being incredibly convenient and very quick and easy, they also really protect the trees, right? If you always use rope, you can actually do a lot of damage and strip the bark off the trees. And the third reason you wanna use these is because if you're always using rope, uh, let's say to hang yourself up, rope can stretch, uh, especially cheap rope, something like 550 cord, for example, that absolutely, it's very easy to stretch that uh, this direction. If you hung a hammock up a 550 cord, uh, you'd wake up and you'd be on the ground. I can almost guarantee it. There, that has a tremendous amount of give in the cord. And these are incredibly easy to set up and they're fully adjustable, literally just like this. And you can pull it down and adjust where you want it. So get yourself some really nice tree straps. They're not very expensive. This one is from ENO and they're about 30 bucks. So number four is not having a sag in the hammock. That's a bit of a fine line because you don't want too much of a sag either. I have seen people pick uh, spots with trees that are just too close to each other and they, their hammock literally looks like a banana. It's, it's like just a crazy little curve and they end up sleeping in like a V in the middle of the night. You don't want that, but you also don't want the hammock to be completely rigid when you set it up. You want just a little bit of a sag in there. So kind of a rule of thumb is that you want your cords hanging up your hammock to be at about a 30 degree angle. Now I know nobody goes out to the woods with a protractor to measure angles, but kind of an easy way to judge them is to make an L with your fingers like this, kind of an upside down L and have this parallel to the ground. And you want both fingers to make contact with the strap. Okay, so something like this is about a 30 degree angle. Now, if it's too severe like this, you know, obviously that's, that's too much of an angle. 
and if it's not enough of an angle and your finger's touching here but this is not really touching and still being parallel, then that is, uh, it's too tight. So when it's hanging naturally, you want it to make contact with both fingers like this and be at about a 30 degree angle. So number five is actually setting your tarp up too high up. Believe it or not, but your tarp is gonna help keep you warm. And a common mistake I see people make is they set the tarp up like six or seven feet off the ground. And I get why they do this. They do this so that they can walk underneath the tarp freely and have a little bit of space there to kind of move around. But what you need to remember is that this tarp is actually going to help insulate you. Uh, all the air inside this tarp is going to heat up from your own body heat. And this is gonna help like kind of trap that heated up air around you. So when you have a tarp too high up, it can't really help uh, keep you warm and help insulate you. And if you also have it too high up, you may allow too much air to come in and flow over your hammock as well as underneath your hammock. So I really recommend that you have the tarp pretty close to you. One, so wind can't blow over top of you, but two, so that your body heat will kind of heat up that air inside of there and help keep you insulated. So the same concept's also true if you're ever building a survival shelter, like a lean-to or a debris hut. If you make it too big, that's more space that your body has to heat up. Hey, real quick, I'm kind of curious, do you prefer hammock camping or tent camping? I'd really love to know. Leave your answer down in the comment section below and tell me why you prefer one over the other. Number six is take your dang boots off before you get into the hammock. There's nothing that drives me crazier than seeing people put their dirty feet inside the hammock. And what's really bad is when they later on forget which side was their foot end and which side was their head end, and they end up putting their face right where their boots just were. So number seven, the truth is that there are some drawbacks to hammock camping. And one of the biggest one is that your gear is not protected like it would be inside a tent. And this is especially true with your shoes. And you may be thinking, well, nobody's gonna come and take my shoes. I have them underneath my hammock. And yeah, sure, that's gonna be true, but it's not gonna stop things like spiders and snakes and slugs from going inside your boots. And that's not something that you wanna wake up and find in the morning. So generally what I do is I have an extra pair of socks and I just make sure to stuff them in that boot pretty well. And then I try to open them up and kind of wrap it around the mouth of the boot as well. And you just kind of got to play with it a little bit just to keep critters and bugs and whatever else from crawling inside your boots at night. So number eight, just like you want to have your tarp pretty close to you so that you can create an air gap to help insulate you, your underquilt should also have a pretty big air gap and a pretty big gap between your actual hammock and the bottom of your underquilt. And I've seen people really get frustrated with this and they want their underquilt right up against them. And that's not what this thing is designed to be. You can kind of see how deep in there and how far uh, the bottom of this is from the bottom of the actual hammock. And that's designed to be that way so that you have an air gap that's gonna heat up from your body temperature and provide further insulation from the outside temperature. So number nine is not protecting your gear from wet weather. So again, since we don't have a tent to protect our boots and all of our gear, you really need to have something to kind of protect us from any condensation or any moisture in the air. And my backpack is from Outdoor Vinyl, so it actually has a rain fly that's built into the very bottom of it. So I can easily cover up my bag just like this. And if it were to rain in the middle of the night, you know, my bag would be mostly protected. But just keep in mind that your bag is most likely gonna be sitting on the ground close to you. So you wanna bring something to cover your bag up, whether it's a trash bag or a proper rain fly for your bag. You may also want to consider hanging your bag up in a tree just like you do for a bear bag just to protect it from foxes and raccoons and rats or anything like that that's scurrying around in the middle of the night. So number 10 brings me into another challenge with hammock camping and that's even though you may be protected from the rain from your tarp and your hammock may be fully protected, the tree is not and the straps attached to the tree are not protected as well. So it's, it is very possible for rain to fall down the tree, run down the tree, go on the straps and then go down the strap and go into your hammock. And this is a very real problem that campers run into. So there's a couple of common ways to address this issue. And one of them is known as a drip line. So essentially you just take a scrap piece of rope and you tie it around your strap here. And the idea is the water will flow down, hit that rope and drip down rather than continuing down to your hammock. Personally, I think that with the tree straps, this is not as much of an issue for me because my hammock attaches to this with a carabiner and that carabiner does take care of a lot of the water. So another common way I see people addressing this issue is using a carabiner. And what you can do is actually use two different carabiners to attach your hammock to your strap. And this alone, a lot of times the water will drip off the first carabiner and not really follow through the second one and go into your hammock. 
And really the third way I see people addressing this issue is if they don't have straps like this or aren't using any carabiners, if they have the ropes that are built right into the hammock and attached to the tree, is you can create a toggle like this and you kind of wrap the rope around the stick several times and that way the water will flow down, hit the stick and drop off there rather than continuing onto your hammock. So next you're gonna wanna learn how to pick a proper camping site. And I just so happen to have a great video all about that. Click right over here to watch that. And as always, I've got links down in the description to all of the equipment I use today. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you over in the next video.